بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته begin in the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful and wish you a Juma Mubarak a blessed Friday on this day Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah in Ahmadu who Nastarina who Nastofiru when I would be lahim in Sharuri and Fusna and Sayat Hamalina Mayat Hilla who fella mudilla la who may you live who fella had yella who I shall do a la ilaha illa law wah the who la sharika the who wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all praises due to allah from whom we seek help and seek uh, forgiveness we seek refuge with allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds whomsoever allah guides will never be led astray and whomsoever allah leads astray no one can guide i bear witness that there is no god but allah the one who has no partner i bear witness that the prophet muhammad is allah's servant and messenger Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah haqqa tukratihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yawfir lakum dhunubakum wa man yuta illaha wa rasooluhu faqad faza fawzan azeema. O ye who believe be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in a way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah and say that which is right. Say that which is true. Allah will bless your deeds for you and forgive your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger of Allah has truly achieved a great triumph. Again, Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Uh, today I've been thinking about this aspect of mistakes you know thinking about making mistakes things that uh you know is, is kind of pretty ubiquitous in, in our human nature it's pretty prevalent it's hard to be mistake free that humans are prone to do so not mistakes in the sense of if we miscalculate something or if we got something or if we forgot to do something or that which we can just think of as genuine you know human errors or mistake genuine mistakes that are you know more innocent in that sense but more so the mistakes that we make the wrongs that we commit uh, that cause harm, the the harm that they cause to our uh, to other people, whether it's physically, emotionally, spiritually, and in, in hurting them, or even hurting things like the trust they might put in us, uh, or other parts in terms of the friendships that might exist, uh, harm to ourselves by continuing to maybe live in a space of denial, by continuing to corrupt our hearts, by uh, maybe even contributing to jeopardizing of our hereafter or our akhira and the harm to our relationship ultimately with God, um, being among those whose our behaviors uh, and whose actions are God is not pleased with, um, and uh, whose demeanor or whose uh, deeds are those which uh, Allah does not um, sanctify and Allah is not uh, okay with uh, and abhors and are, is actually detests. So these are the mistakes and that go beyond just the external impacts we might see, you know, whether it's situationally or interpersonally, and they actually go deeper. They go beneath the surface and they really affect the essence of our soul. So you can think of a number of what these mistakes or what these errors, what these wrongs might be. Um, the, 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 the ones that, that truly cut deep, but, but they, the more that they happen, the more that they do uh, occur, they start to maybe change our internal chemistry, our, our spiritual chemistry, the, the state of our heart. And as humans, we're prone to err. We're prone to mess up. Um, and when we're not in a conducive or positive environment or surrounded by people who are positive in that way or conducive to that way, um, or if we just kind of are left to ourselves to uh, that we give in to our lower selves, our base desires, um, and we continue to perpetuate that harm, you know, we can become so steeped in the mistakes that we make that it can feel as if we may be addicted, not just to the mistakes, but to the, the state of being that we're in, whether it's avoidance, whether if it's denial, whether if it's some other kind of a vice that we have, that we feel like this is something we can't give up. We've got to, we, we're just kind of, this is our way of being. This is our new kind of chemistry in, in which we operate. And, you know, if we tell a lie, uh, in a sense, thinking about just example, like lying, um, huge kind of a, not just a huge sin, but something that opens a door. Um, if we tell, you know, a lie to kind of get ourselves out of a situation, 
we and then we gradually normalize it because we've done it once. Um, we do fi we find ourselves, you know, going without even maybe a moment's notice or thought of thinking of this as a vice, and it just becomes like second nature, similar to other things that that might be taken on. You know, you backbite once, and then it just becomes normalized. You take on an illegal or a prohibited sub substance once, it feels good, or it does it has like an effect, and it just becomes part and parcel of that behavior. And thinking that, however, though that making a mistake in the sense that when we when we look at it it's not something that necessarily needs to define us it's not something that um that that you know is it's like oh because we're committing this mistake we're beyond any pale of redemption um but also that that mistake being in that space and, and becoming cognizant of it becoming aware of it it can actually be something that helps shake us into a kind of a realization and it gives us a moment for redemption it, it, it we we start to maybe appreciate or start to see that how far we've kind of come and see how much we need or how how much we actually do need um in terms of a connection to not just the divine but to to be authentic to be good to ourselves to to not be those who err in such a way that that perpetuates this harm our tradition, our humanity is founded on this aspect of this redemption, this estoba, but also in this aspect of making a mistake, but not letting that mistake define you. You know, the original sin is not something that's a concept within Islam. Um, eating of that fruit is, but what's the uh, the defining part of it is is the the turning, the to, uh, the toba that is that was offered, the seeking of repentance, the giving of repentance um, that was there. Um, or the the forgiveness that that, that followed. Um, we have it in Adam and uh, Hawa, our, our 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 parents, and then we have uh, a story that sticks out to me that helps to kind of consolidate it in the story of Omar ibn al Khattab, who was the second Khalifa of Islam, um, in in some of the mistakes that he made, but being confronted when realizing the impact of those and 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 the the turn that it makes is kind of like a supercut of a of, of someone's journey just kind of put into one but just briefly you know Omar al-Khattab being who he was very had a significant amount of not just animosity but a persecution and a uh, a genuine kind of a hate and dislike for um not just uh the muslims but particularly for this religion that had come and that was starting to divide his um his his community up like you know this is this is a very tribal society very um much based on this aspect of lineage of tribe of this association and all these different kinds of binds that are there and this religion has now come into the mix that is 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 seemingly kind of putting parent against child child against parent brother against brother sister against sister all these different things these dynamics to get affected and so Umar al-Khattab is very much you know connected to this aspect of this tribalism this 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 thought of this this kind of this the jahiliya aspect of of, of uh, these these ties that are holding together and is incensed by this and goes to the extent to persecute um, these people who he feels are perpetuating this and so you know you have uh, an incident where uh, Omar still being a resident of Mecca, still being someone who is a part of that community, sees that uh, some of the Muslims are starting to go to migrate to Abyssinia. Um, and when he asks one of them, I believe there's a there's a, 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 a one of the um, women that he was uh, that had a, that was one of his neighbors or one of the community people. He saw her leaving. He asked her, "Why are you leaving?" And she responds that this is because this is your doing. You persecuted us. You did this. We have no other choice but to leave. And that that distressed him, that that hit him in, in, in such a way that it was just like, oh, like, you know, I don't want that on my conscience. But it it didn't change things completely. But it was something that even later in life he would think about that he was this person as as Amir al Mu'minin, as the person who's leading the Muslims. This is where his start was. It was in that space where he caused this kind of a pain. So it kind of like maybe planted that first seed of uh, of a faith of doubt, whatever it may be, in that sense of 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 shaking that foundation that he had built on in, in that sense. And then, of course, we have the famous story of him going, you know, uh, to, uh, to to seemingly to go kill the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to say, hey, look, I've seen too much of this. I need to go have, uh, need to go take care of this. And and he gets redirected because he's like, hey, are you going to go do this? Um, and to, the, to, to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, are you going to do that? Or uh, aren't you mindful of what your your own household is doing, referring to his sister and his brother-in-law who had become Muslim? And so he became even more incensed in this. And we know that he went back, uh, you know, busted in and, and, and wanted to see what was happening. And, you know, in, 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 in finding out that they that they were Muslim and, and, and seeing that that was the case, 
uh, you know, physically harming them. You know, he, I think he had uh, hit or struck his brother-in-law and then his, his, um, his sister had said, uh, had kind of rebuked him in the sense that, you know, you can kill us, but we're not going to leave the religion of Islam. And he struck her as well. He, he physically harmed her. And when he saw the harm that he had done, he saw her, uh, her, her face had been marked, her face had been cut, he had saw the, the harm he had inflicted in that moment, in that rage that he had, he was, he, you know, he, he, he had been in, that moment that he had seen that harm was a moment where he had to stop. He, he, it was, it was some, some kind of a light went off in his head. Something had went off where he said, he, he, he calmed down. He had some space where it was just like, like he just had to look at what had happened and was like, oh, like, okay. Like I, like, I, all right, I, I messed up. I went too far. I made, I made a mistake, but yeah, let me, let me just check myself. And from there, in a sense, you know, reading or hearing the words of the Quran, um, going from that space then to the Prophet Sallam's uh, home um, to take the Shahada. Um, when he came, you know, people are on edge, like, oh my God, like Omar say, like this is something about to happen. And, you know, he, he, he admits of his, of his sins, he admits of his wrongdoings, and he accepts Islam. And um, the Muslims refer that after that point, uh, Islam had a sense of pride, had a sense of dignity, because now they could go do tawaf without having to not be able to, without not be able to not complete it or uh, feel that they're going to be persecuted because Omar was there. Omar had brought this izza that was uh, that was due to the Muslims and and that they had no fear of being able to do that. And so from this person who at that moment had been kind of uh, just high on this anger, high and fueled and addicted to this kind of hatred or this kind of tribalism that led him to his face to make such a grave mistake, to hurt somebody, but to not be blinded by it, but to see it as a, uh, a conscientious moment and to then take the steps to redeem that themselves. Not to say that that was ever something that uh, he forgot about him or was somebody who, who was never felt that he was deserving of the kinds of leadership or the kinds of spaces that were maybe afforded to him because of the things he had done in the past. Um, and this was a grown man. This wasn't a child. This was a grown man, mid thirties or forties or so, uh, who had committed this. And so it was very in tune with what he had done and, and would continue to think about it and have significant remorse, significant guilt about it. And so we think about that you know, as, as we had mentioned that if we get to, to some, we, we, if we get some sort of like maybe a high or a gratification from committing a wrong, or if we just kind of get fueled perpetually, we may not feel like, oh, I need to do this, I need to do this, it just becomes a habit. Um, we eventually normalize its doing, we eventually normalize that lying, that persecuting, that hurting in a way that we, as I mentioned, find ourselves addicted to it. The very feeling that we get, uh, we start to divorce ourselves from reality and uh, you know, we continue to corrupt our hearts. We continue to make the climb from uh, out of uh, our spiritual graves. We we continue to uh, steepen that 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 pit that we're in, and it becomes that much more difficult. That we, we're shoveling out, we're doing all these different actions, and they may not be positive things. And in the meantime, we're just kind of digging this, the, the 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 grave deeper for our spirit to climb out of. And for this reason, I would like to kind of just take us to. Uh, to use a 12-step approach, not just towards remedy, what might be a simple or innocent mistake, but to help us really heal, to heal holistically, physically, mentally, spiritually, from not just what those mistakes have caused in terms of the harm, but those which also lead us down uh, an even further path, a destructive path, uh, a disconnected path from Allah, if they are not remedied. It's very similar in a sense, and, and, and it is inspired in that way by the uh, the 12 steps that are oftentimes used for addiction recovery um, you may think of like uh, AA or Alcoholics Anonymous. They have a 12 step program. And I came across a, um, this, a book uh, that was um, called, uh, you know, uh, recovery from addiction um, from an Islamic perspective or addiction recovery from an Islamic perspective. And it's from the Taiba foundation that does a lot of work with incarcerated Muslims, but 12 steps following that, but to add kind of a, an Islamic flavor or Islamic kind of t t uh, take to it. And so, you know, whether our mistake making and wrongdoing has or is a, par a product of an addiction that we might have, or whether it might just be an external stimulus or internal vice, even if it's a serious mistake or an offense or a transgression that is committed even once, um, we can glean some benefit, inshallah, from looking to not just rectify the mistake, but to holistically be able to transform ourselves after it, just like Omar al-Khattab had made after uh, experiencing the harm that he had just committed, just doing that. And making a complete 180 in a sense that, that he still sat with it. It still was something that would eat at him and he would still feel guilty about it. But it was something that he continued to work with. And so these steps, inshallah, and we'll conclude with these steps here. 
that first and foremost, we admit the addiction. Step one, admit the addiction. We make that we made the mistake or admit uh, that we had that problem, that we caused a transgression. This is, uh, this is a, a step that involves deep honesty with ourselves, deep humility um, with ourselves, um, because honesty is something that helps to open the heart, to help clean the heart, to open the, the heart in its pathways for redemption, whereas the contrary, dishonesty continues to put smoke in mirrors, to, continues to pollute it, to continues to create catacombs that enable us and our, enables our spirit to just descend into all these different places of wrongdoing and be continued Continue to be distanced by from Allah. Um, and this can be done through personal reflection, can be done through speaking with the proper folks, trusted folks, uh, spiritual professionals, uh, counseling professionals, people who are credentialed in that way, um, and, and seeing the extent to which our mistakes or wrongs have become a unmanageable thing, that they've done a significant amount of harm. And so we, we, we want to set at this first step that we are not what we have done. We are not our mistakes, and uh, we will not always be our mistakes. You know, we will. Uh, we 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 are beyond those. We can we can be the redemption uh, that's there. But we're not. If we if we lied once, or if we uh, mis uh, did something wrong once, we're not a liar for life. We don't have to be. We can be in a sense, but our choice is what will define us. Not just not the mistake in and of itself, and to not despair in the mercy of Allah. Step two is coming to accept the belief that Allah can restore us, can redeem us that uh, Ghazali taught that hope and fear are the two wings of the believer um, and that we don't despair in Allah's mercy uh, in, in, in the sense that we, we go from a space of where we admit what wrong we did, what mistake we made, but then we go to the space that we, we transcend to where we believe that Allah can restore us, that there's no restoration other than through Allah. And at the least, we want to make sure that we, want, we have that faith that this is for a higher cause. Step three, making a decision to then turn our will and turn our lives into the care of Allah, not just accepting the belief that Allah is there and can restore us, but to make a conscientious decision to reaffirm, to turn our will, to turn our lives over to Allah's care. We reset our intentions in the space. We, we recognize we're in a tradition that tells us that if we walk to Allah, Allah comes to us running, um, that it may not happen in a sense that this 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 decision to turn our will and turn our lives, it's going to be, it's its sometimes hard. It may take some time. It may not happen overnight, but to get into that mindset that we want to uh, turn ourselves over to the care of Allah, that whatever happens here, we, we, we are in Allah's care. From Allah, we come and to Allah, do we return? Step four, we take a moral inventory of ourselves. We see uh, what flaws had caused our mistakes. We take an honest look at our beliefs and our actions that have gotten us to where we might be now and to the space that we've made our mistakes or we make that mistake. Um, it helps to reveal our inner selves in a way that we might not have discovered because we have just been making these mistakes and we've kind of gone to a space where we don't know what has happened, but the past memories, the past mistakes, the things we've forgotten, it helps bring it to the surface and it helps us to kind of see where, what's, what is our inventory? What is this, the stock within us that needs to be removed? Um, so we wrestle with that shame. We wrestle with ourselves. We do what's called majahada or what the Prophet Sallam called the greater struggle, the greater jihad um, of wrestling with our nafs. Um, we speak that which is true, we, we, because what good will lying bring to us? Lying will just kind of perpetuate that harm, but we speak the truth. Um, and we go through the different stages of our nafs, where we go from a, a nafs that commands or that is very base level, just commands the evil and, and desires the evil. And we go to a, a nafs that reproaches it, that, that maybe is a little bit more critical, um, but we transcend into a nafs that is at peace, a soul that is at peace and a soul which Allah tells to return, to come back, because now uh, your soul is at peace, come back to Allah um, and, and where, you, where you will reside. So we take this uh, this not just in, in a way of just saying, oh, here's all the wrong things that we've done. We also make an inventory for ourselves of what are our needs? What are the resentments that we have? What are our wants? What are some of the desires? What are the things that we wrestle with? Holistically, we take an inventory of ourselves so we get to know ourselves. Our tradition teaches us we are from a tradition that the one who knows themselves knows their Lord. And the more we know ourselves, we come to a space where we can connect back to Allah. Because at the end of the day, these deeper mistakes that we make, they are as if we're putting a veil or a, a stumbling block between us and our relationship or our connection to Allah. Um, and the more we kind of rework that and the more we uh, repair that, we remove those different disconnectors. And so uh, we, we, we begin to come to a space where we, when we know ourselves, we can better know our creator. Step five, admitting to Allah, admitting to yourself and admitting to another human being the exact nature of your wrongs. 
So this is the first step of toba, of, um, of, of repentance in a sense. We admit to others, they don't have to be like every single person, you have to broadcast it on, on Facebook or anything like that, but trusted individuals. And you don't have to conflate this with like, oh, uh, this is, I'm, I'm supposed to conceal my sins and I'm not, this is wrong. I'm not concealing my sins. Um, no, you, you, you are disclosing this to a trusted person and not for the sake of showing off, not the sort of sake of being haughty, but for the sake of growing. Um, you write the story, you tell the story, you tell the truth. So you admit to yourself the exact nature of those things um, as this first step of seeking repentance. Step six, that we become entirely ready to have Allah remove the defects of our character. It may seem like it's, it goes without saying, but this is the second step of Tawbah, the intention of never making that mistake again or, have, or willingly making that mistake again, that uh, we, we, we are ready to, for the state to be, to be transformed, to be changed. Uh, step seven, humbling asking Allah to remove our shortcomings. So being ready and now being at the state where we ask, we make that dua, we make that prayer, we make that salah, that we have uh, admit that we've made a wrongdoing and we ask Allah to forgive us, to forgive us, to correct that. Um, we have the, we, this is a prophetic thing um, from Adam, from to Musa, to Yunus, that uh, making a prayer that, oh Allah, we wronged ourselves and uh, to, to forgive us or that we, we, we are not, uh, we've been of the wrongdoers, we've made a mistake um, and, and, and to, to, to forgive us in that sense. So having humility, realizing our powerlessness, realizing that again, to Allah we belong, Allah we return. So making a list of those who, and step eight, making a list of those who we harmed and become willing to make amends. So if it's somebody that, uh, if it's from one mistake, if it's from a lot, this is the third condition of, of Tawbah in the sense of leaving the sin uh, immediately in a sense, um, if, if we're in the middle of committing it um, to, to make sure we're not perpetuating that. So just being at a space where we recognize we've harmed somebody, we don't want to harm anybody else and we become willing to make amends, but we have made this we've made this acceptance of not uh, we're not going to continue with this. If we are, we're going to leave it immediately. Uh, step nine: making direct amends and making amends from the people we've put on that list to those who we've wronged, whether it's possible or except in a case where it may injure that person or harm them further. And so again, it's key to work with a uh, professional, a mental health professional, a spiritual care professional to help with this so that it's not something that we feel like we have to do and we cause even more harm. So we want to be ready for responses that aren't going to be easy to take. We're not announcing that we've gone religious or like, hey, now you have to forgive me. I'm, I'm changed now or whatnot, but being mindful, being honest. Uh, it's the final condition of Tawbah, that we rectify our wrongs with good. And sometimes it may not present itself. And then steps 10 to 12 are maintenance in a sense of repeating, that we continue to take personal inventory. And when we're in the wrong or make mistakes or we lean into it, that we properly admit it, we properly confront it. We are being honest with ourselves. We do the self-reflection. We do the uh, purification of our heart. We, we realize this and we, we, we remember in a sense Allah. We, we can incorporate this remembrance of Allah. We incorporate this God consciousness because our tradition tells us that um, the remembrance of Allah, hearts will find rest, hearts will find clarity, hearts will find peace. And we conclude in this sense, we conclude uh, on this step 12, that we carry this message, we carry this change, we transform not just ourselves, but we begin to transform our surroundings in a positive way. We, we, we not only have made amends to the space, but we become agents of change. We become good, uh, positive individuals in the world around us. And uh, an example I can think of uh, that, that clearly represents this is Malcolm X. You have Malcolm X who recognized what he was doing, recognized where he had gone, recognized how far uh, down uh, a, a destructive path he had gone and became an agent for change to lift up other people, to be a, a positive agent, to be somebody who uh, received a, an education in prison, in a sense, from a prison library, uh, and, and became someone who would become a, an agent for change, an advocate for not just civil rights, but an advocate um, for the uplifting condition of humanity through Islam, like was, was somebody who was a positive person, but was someone who was essentially addicted, was someone who was um, steeped in the vices, steeped in the uh, illegal substances, steeped in all these different uh, these uh, depravities that were there, but redeemed themselves in this way, and to then go further to become an agent, a transformative agent, and a powerful person uh, spiritually in terms of lifting up those 
who uh, who 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 have uh, also maybe have uh, stumbled in a way. And and to note that how the autobiography of Malcolm X continues even after his death, almost 50, 60 years after his death, that he continues to transform lives because of his story. He was honest with himself. His story was honest. He shared what that story was. He shared his his uh, his high moments. He shared his low moments. He shared his honest story. He told his truth. He rectified his mistakes. And we see that changing people's lives day in, day out, up until our modern time. So inshallah, may Allah allow us to, in the spirit of Malcolm X, in the spirit of those who were in our tradition, who came before us, who made mistakes, to allow us to think about how our mistakes don't necessarily have to define us, that it is the turning, the, the, the act of turning is what defines us, the tawbah that we, that we make the, 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 from a tawab, from the one who is the acceptor of repentance, the one who is the grantor of this repentance, the one who, who, who is there for us and receiving this turning, um, that we, we are not our mistakes. We are not defined by our mistakes. We are not those mistakes, but we are the ones who act and change from what those mistakes have done. We are, we are those who can be redeemed from them. Uh, and we are those who can be transformed from them. Uh, so remembering that we're not the, the, the lower aspect of what we may uh, default to, it, what we may have been compelled to act to. Um, and rather we are, we are much more than that and we can be much more than that. And our tradition is one that is conducive to in not just emphasizing that, but to making that even more conducive. So in closing, inshallah, we pray that Allah guide us Guide us all to the right path, the path of those who you have bestowed your favor and not have of those who have incurred your displeasure. Pray that Allah uh, unites our hearts to remove the seeds of hypocrisy, to remove the seeds of discord, remove the seeds of falsehood, and to help plant and foster and to nurture the seeds of mercy, seeds of love, seeds of restoration, seeds of reconciliation and unity within us. Ask Allah to make amends for any wrongs that we've committed, any harms or any mistakes that we've done any injustices we've committed, and that we uh, are able to become those who put or those who convey justice, comfort, and care to those whom we have wronged and to the world around, to make from our sins and our mistakes and our transgressions and our wrongdoing the opportunities not just for repentance, but for growth, for purification, for excellence, and for transformation, not just for ourselves, but the world around, and for care for those who have been wrong, and especially for our own souls if we, that we have wronged against. And we ask Allah to allow us to leave this Jummah, allow us to leave this day, allow us to leave this space better than we had come into it, and to not, and to allow us to leave every place that we go better than we uh, had entered it there, and to leave it better than we had entered it. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama salli ta'ala Ibrahima wa ala ali Ibrahima, inna ka amidu majeed. Allah bestow your favor upon the Prophet Muhammad, upon the family of the Prophet Muhammad, as you bestowed your blessing upon the family of Ibrahim. Ibad Allah rahimakum Allah, inna Allah ya'amur bil adli wa lisan, wa ita'adil kulba wa yanha'an il fasha wa al-mudgari wa al-baghi, ya'idhukum la'alakum tadakkaroon, udhkuru Allah yadhkurukum wa da'uhu wa yadhkujib lakum wa la'adhikum Allah wa yadhkur. O Allah, O servants of Allah, may Allah be merciful to you. Verily Allah commands you to act with justice, to confer benefits upon one another, and to do good to one another, as one does to one's family and kindred, and forbids evil, which pertains to your own souls, and evils which affect and prohibit uh, which affect others and prohibits unlawful rebellion, he warns you against being unmindful. But remember Allah, he too will remember you. Call upon Allah, and Allah will make a response to your call, and verily in divine remembrance is the highest of virtue. May Allah accept our uh, Jummah, may Allah accept our sacrifices, may Allah accept our sincere repentance. Just know that every action, every moment, every opportunity we have is a moment to change uh, the mistakes and to rectify that we do. And it all starts with making that intention, being honest with ourselves, and uh, doing the work that needs to be done. Inshallah, we'll talk further about this. But for the rest of the day, Jamal Mubarak to you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.